Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Ariel Epstein. Joining the show today from Number Fire and FanDuel, Jim Sonis. We're breaking down win totals. It's never too early to talk NFL, right, Jim? Never too early, never too late, never too anything to talk NFL. Win totals went up last week, so ready to dig in. I think we got some pretty good numbers on the board here for today. Let's start with the New England Patriots. You're keeping your eye on their win total. I find it interesting because we don't really know the quarterback situation. How does that factor into your handicap? Yeah, so I have my win total projections, and a lot of those are derived from expected passing efficiency. So it does matter a lot whether it's Mac Jones or Cam Newton, but I think the overall takeaway here is I think that they're being a bit overinflated because of all the moves they made this offseason. So to me, nine is a tough number to get to, especially when the under is plus 100 even money there. I then projected at 7.6 wins, and part of that is skepticism around their rebuild offense, but also like it's a tough division now, at least I think so. I have the Bills winning 11.9 games, Dolphins are at 9.6, the Jets are at 6.0, and Those wins got to come from somewhere. So it's a tough division, I think, for the Patriots this year. Tough competition overall. And I think that under nine is realistic here. They'd have to go over 500 to get to nine wins for this year. So I think that we could see some bumps in the road, whether it be with Cam Newton or with Mac Jones. And that, to me, says under here, especially when you factor in how good specifically the Bills and the Dolphins could be this year. Looking at the New England Patriots last season, they finished with seven wins. However, don't forget about that 17th game. Another win total that you're looking at is the Chicago Bears. A new quarterback's in town, the former Bengals quarterback, Andy Dalton, and I guess former Cowboys quarterback now as well. How much do you believe Dalton's going to help this Bears team? It's a tough one to handicap because you have to decide how much is Andy Dalton, how much is Justin Fields. But I think to me, the big thing that it comes down to is I would expect this team to be starting a rookie at left tackle and a rookie at quarterback. So when I look at the projected passing efficiency for the Chicago Bears, it's hard to get too high of a number for them. And it's not because of Justin Fields. I love Justin Fields. I think he was a tremendous pick and they didn't give up too much to get him. So I think that that was a great pick. But when you have a team starting rookies at what potentially could be the two most important pieces on offense, two most important positions, it's really tough to get for an over. The defense had to shed some good assets this year to get under the salary cap. So I am going under this number. I do believe in Justin Fields long term, but in the short term, it's just hard to be high on a team that's going to have so much inexperience at key positions for this year. Jim thinking a little bit of regression in Chicago this year. The Bears went eight and eight last year. Now expecting under a seven and a half for a win total. Final win total. You're looking at the Cincinnati Bengals, former team of Andy Dalton. Yet now Joe Burrow, second year under his belt in the NFL coming off that torn ACL. How do you see the Bengals season playing out? Yeah, Joe Burrow is the key driver here because if you give me a full season of Joe Burrow, I'm going to expect some pretty good things for the Bengals. Burrow last year played decently well before he got hurt. And now you're adding Riley Reef at right tackle. You add in another interior lineman in the second round of the draft, but also Jamar Chase to the pass catching core. And that's a good group of wide receivers with T. Higgins now being a full year in the league as well. They're probably going to move the football pretty well offensively. My win total projections actually had their defense taking a step back this year because William Jackson III is gone, Carlos Dunlap is gone, and the guys they signed to replace them are not as good as the guys they lost. So I actually had them taking a step back defensively, but the step forward they take offensively with Burrow being there for a full season is enough to overcome that. I've been projected at 7.2 wins right now. The over at 6.5 is plus 120. So we're getting plus money to go over a number I think will get there straight up. So I think this makes a lot of sense. Buying into Joe Burrow in year two, it's a really tough division, especially if you expect the Browns to take a step forward, which a lot of people do. So it's not an easy road for the Bengals, but getting to seven wins, I think is very realistic if this offense lives up to what it could do. As Jim mentioned, three teams last year in the AFC North had 11 wins or more. As for the Bengals, they were not one of those teams. The Bengals were 4-11 and last year. Add in that extra game, add in another year of Joe Burrow, plus he gets his LSU wide receiver and Jamar Chase. Maybe the Bengals can hit that over of 6.5, plus money, great value. For Jim Sonis from Numberfire and FanDuel, I'm Ariel Epstein. Thanks for joining us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. 